Hello and welcome to the special 50th anniversary episode of Chopper Chat. I'm Pippa Wetzel, this is my dad Clem, Hi, Pip. who is joining <laughs> me here today because he was a lifeguard at Piha in the 70s. You're not very good at this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Take over. Yeah. These are the grandkids <laughs> taking okay. over. Okay, Uppa, tell us about your time working at the rescue helicopter. Well, we, uh, it was based at Piha in those days, and uh, it was up on the hill behind the surf club, and it was um, uh, ideally situated there because mainly for West Coast um, surf rescues. And uh, they were the busiest beaches with Piha yeah. or Kerikur and Murawai, and right down to Port Waikato and right up north, um, in fact, up, up past the top end of Murawai. How come you were involved? Well, I was, um, I was overseas when it first started, so I wasn't here for the first couple of years. Uh, when I came back to New Zealand, this um, uh, surf life saving helicopter based at PR, and I was belonged to the PR Surf Club, um, it was, was, um, I thought it was brilliant. It was, uh, it was, as I understood, it was the first time ever in the world that a, um, a helicopter had been based on, a surf, on surf beaches, and it was really something um, Quite, uh, quite dramatically fantastic because we were able to get out the back a lot quicker than we could off them. There's big sets coming in, and we didn't have motorised craft in those days. There was no RIBs. Uh, whenever we did rescues, if somebody got caught in a rip, uh, we had to we had to swim out uh, or paddle out on boards, surfboards. And most of the guys on the west coast were surfers as well, and surf life savers. And in fact, I think some of the reason why we were surf life savers is because we could go surfing. <laughs> And so the boys, most of the guys were very good, on, very good on boards, and we used them a lot for rescues. But, but the chopper, I mean, you could get out and you could do rescues next to no time. It was, and sometimes it took a long time to get out the back. If somebody got caught in a in a rip in a hole, and they took out, it could take a quarter of an hour sometimes for somebody. And you might have half a dozen guys all trying to get out to that, get out to get out to the patient. But with the chopper, it was a lot quicker. And also, when there were lots of people caught in a rip, you had if you had the um, the chopper could go out, drop the trapeze, the caribou, you could pick up four or five people at the same time and lift them all up in the air and get them all back to, back to safety. So that was very good from that point of view. How long were you involved with the service? Um, well, I, as I said, I came back at, and had been going for two years and I wasn't involved for very long because I, um, I was at a, involved in a, uh, in a rescue uh, one afternoon uh, at uh, Kuiper Heads and I had a... Um, I, was dropped out at sea. It was quite a long story. So briefly, um, I hit a sandbar and um, broke my leg in many places. Was there a rescue that you were involved in that was particularly memorable? They had a lot of good rescues there. Uh, one of them, uh, I wasn't there, but I heard about it from some of the boys. They did a rescue down in the in the White Tacres where somebody had fallen down a ravine, and they couldn't get the chopper down because of the canopy, of the trees coming over, and he was worried about the blades. So some of the guys were, were on the um, on the um, skids on the side. And they were, breaking the branches that were going down so the choppers could come through. And one of the guys actually jumped, I think it was Nicky again, I think he jumped onto a branch and ripped the, brought the whole branch down. So then they could get him, they get the chopper down to within about, I think about, I don't know, six feet or so of the ground, say a metre and a half of the ground. And there was a number of people who were injured and they, they had them in, um, they had them strapped into stretches and they put them onto the skids on the side, but it was uneven. So one of the guys hang on, hung on to the other side so it could still come up evenly and not clip the branches as the, as the, as the blades were coming up. That was quite a that was quite a cool risk as well. But I'm sure there's been many cool riskers yeah. Yeah, since then. Yeah. So Upper, what kind of training did you have? Well, we um, all of the people on the uh, helicopter lifeguard service were all qualified lifeguards anyway, and so they'd all had to do their uh, their bronze medallions and their surf times and their swim times. And I think a lot of the west coast beaches, their swim times were a lot shorter. They had to like there was a four forty hours for four hundred meter swim. And they had to do, in some cases, like a minute less than, say, other clubs did. And that was what, that was part of the regulation. They did a PR anyway. So we had that. And then we had to do um, we had to do St John's Ambulance courses over weekends. So we went to, uh, we had to go into um, the St John's Ambulance headquarters where they were running those courses. And uh, we learned quite a bit there, as I recall. And then, uh, then we had to go and spend time on the ambulance service, working with the St John's. And so what they made, well, because I joined a little later and most of the, most of the chaps had already done their time, um, I went on to the, it was the Mero Road one in uh, Green Lane, which is next to the motorway, which most of the accidents were happening. And we used to do the, uh, the early, morning, early Sunday morning shift. So I think you started about 10 o'clock on a Saturday night and you got off about 4 o'clock on Sunday morning. 
and you attended a lot of the pretty serious accidents that would happen there. And there were some um, quite dramatic accidents that I didn't have a lot to do. I was, I was sort of uh, a semi-observer trying to hold the odd person here and let the St John's Ambulance people do their work. But it was, uh, it was all part of the training they had to do. And I'm sure that training came in handy when the guys are doing rescues around cliffs tops and, uh, and through the Waitakere Ranges and the people are having accidents there. Opa, was it cool being lifeguard and working on the helicopter? Oh, it was really terrific. Yeah, it, was, um, it brought a whole new, uh, well, I guess um, you, you felt you had a lot more ability to get to people in trouble. And before you thought, well, you know, there's a big surf and if anything happens, well, you know, how are we going to get out there? And especially a pee hard because we had to use, like, sometimes the surf was so great you couldn't get through, you have to try to get off the end of Lion Rock or off the end of Camel Rock and you have to wait for the sets to come through so then you could actually get on the water and swim before the next set came in, in case it brought you back and crashed, you know, crashing onto the rocks. And so, um, and, that, and there was a number of times that we were involved in doing that sort of, those sort of rescues. Um, so having the, knowing the helicopter was there was, was a great relief thinking, oh, well, we'd be able to get out the back pretty quickly if we had to. And uh, there were a number of times, uh, one rescue in particular uh, with the helicopter that would have been handy was a, a girl was carried out on the far side of Lion Rock and it took, um, I can't remember, probably three quarters of an hour for somebody to actually get out to her. And Murray Bray, he, he got out to finally in the end and he managed to get to, he went off Lion Rock with a surfboard. And raging surf, yeah. He just timed it right and he managed to get out to her and brought her back in again. But there were, there were probably 30 guys at the time all trying to get out from either side of Lion Rock using boards and whatever, which were the, the swimmers, even the, we had some Olympic swimmers there, they couldn't get out. So just freak, these freak accidents can happen where uh, there'll be a hole and suddenly there'll be a ripple just occur and out they'll go and try to get, try to get into that hole isn't always easy when you're trying to get out there. Mm. So having the helicopter there, Taji, to answer your question, was, was very, very, very reassuring and saved a lot of people's lives, I'm sure. Taj, do you have any other questions you want to ask, Opa? Who's your favourite grandchild? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you all are, of course. So, Mum, is this why you wanted to be involved with the rescue helicopter? Yeah, it's a big part of it, actually, because I grew up hearing these stories, and I was very proud of all the work that Opa used to do, and I had heard the story about, obviously, when he broke his leg, and that was, you know, obviously, it was a pretty traumatic experience for Opa. Um, but I thought it was incredible what he did. So when I had an opportunity to be involved, I thought that that was pretty cool because there was a family link there. And also because we're very fortunate and we get to spend time in places around Auckland and the Coromandel where, you know, um, sometimes, hopefully never, but sometimes you could need the assistance of the rescue helicopter. And we've been several times, haven't we? We've seen the rescue helicopter. And every time I see it, I think, oh gosh, you know, that's mm. awful for some family out there, but also incredibly heartwarming because help's on its way. Mum, why is it important? Well, I think like Opa said, sometimes um, time is so important, right? So if you can get to someone who's injured or needs help really, really quickly, then that can make a huge difference. So that's why the rescue helicopter is able to do that. They're able to get to people quickly. They're able to get to people where normal ambulances can't travel, obviously, um, which means a lot of lives have been saved and a lot of people have been able to get the kind of medical care that they need um, as quickly as possible. Thank you for watching. It's been fun. See you next time. Bye. Happy birthday, Auckland Westpac Rescue Helicopter. Helicopter.